If you look at the reign of Joseph Stalin as the General Secretary of the Soviet Union, you get an image of Stalin as a ruthless, politically crafty, and dangerously paranoid individual. He held power in large part due to the fear he instilled. That insidious fear, not just of Stalin himself, but the mistrust he fostered between people themselves, let him stay in power for 30 years. It eventually also led to Joseph Stalin lying in his own urine, the heads of state surrounding him, too afraid to lift a finger to help. Live by the sword, die by the loss of bodily functions, in a narratively interesting way, as the saying goes. Thanks for checking out our new series, The Final 24. Our other series, A Day in the Life and A Brief History, have lots more videos to watch and learn from. Like and subscribe to A Day in History to be notified of new content as it's uploaded to feed your insatiable curiosity for all things historical. Joseph Stalin rose to power in the early 1920s. He already held the title of General Secretary while Lenin, his predecessor, suffered from worsening health problems. As Lenin declined, Stalin solidified his power base, discredited his rivals, and positioned himself as the next de facto ruler. One of the last things Stalin and Lenin worked on together was the creation of the USSR, formalizing Soviet power in the surrounding countries. There is conjecture that Stalin helped speed Lenin's declining health along with one or another good old-fashioned toxic substance, but no claims have been officially made. In his many years in office, Stalin was responsible for the leadership of the massive USSR and his decisions controlled the fate of millions upon millions of people. His highlight reel, if you want to call it that, includes anti-Semitic witch hunts, secret police reign of terror, mass executions, World War II, the beginning of the Cold War, and the Holdemore, among others. We have a whole video covering the Holdemore in more detail if you want to check it out. But in the briefest explanation, Stalin and his government basically caused a famine with the end result of millions starving. This famine hit the hardest in the Ukraine and still reverberates in the consciousness of Ukrainians today, especially with current world happenings. Stalin dealt with or caused all these issues and more, while the politicking, backstabbing, sneaky dealings, state-sanctioned imprisonments, and propaganda wars went on continually all around him. He was a very astute man to have survived to suffer a probably natural death. It's possible that his astuteness and paranoia impacted the events of his death, however, and not for the better. Stalin did not trust the members of his government and spent years making himself the embodiment of the Soviet Republic. His mistrust extended to doctors and he had his physician imprisoned when he suggested Stalin might consider retiring to preserve his health. Old Joe went on to have several more Kremlin doctors arrested and interrogated for a suspected plot to poison and kill senior government officials. To sum this up, we have a system of power where Stalin is the ultimate source and no one else has the will to speak against him or his wishes, a general mistrust of doctors in the highest level of the Soviet government and suspicion of anyone in a high level of political power by everyone around him. That includes Stalin, as he apparently loved practical jokes, and nobody would believe Joseph incapable of an intricate plan to trick dissidents out into the open. This is not a good combination of factors, not just on a governmental level, but personally for Stalin, as we will see. When Stalin was in his personal home of Kutsevo Dasha, taking a break from playing his government officials off of one another to keep them from getting ambitious, he collapsed on the night of March 1st, 1953. The previous night and into the late morning, Stalin and some of his senior staff had a number of drinks. His guests, some of the most powerful men of the USSR, left at around 5 or 6 a.m., with Stalin reportedly happy and in good health. Stalin, at 70-plus years old, was beyond frat party levels of alcohol consumption and still going strong, until later that night when his household servants found him lying in a puddle of his own urine, partially paralyzed. It is unclear if he was conscious when they found him, but he wasn't coherent enough to pass orders out when the four members of the senior staff, Georgi Malenkov, Deputy Premier Nikita Khrushchev, Lavrenti Beria, People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs, and Nikolai Bulganin, Defense Minister, showed up after a call from Stalin's personal guards. Because of the suspicion of doctors, no one had called a physician, and when the senior staff arrived, they saw Stalin disheveled and sleeping on the couch, but otherwise not obviously in distress and didn't immediately call for professional aid. It wasn't until the next morning that the Minister of Health was called to select a doctor who could be trusted to come look at Stalin. 
Some have stated that this wait could have been a purposeful delay to hasten Stalin towards his death. But it could have just been that these men had no firm power structure to fall back on. Stalin was the one with the power, and he made sure everybody knew it. Stalin knew his health was in decline, but never formalized the handoff of leadership. So when these men were put on the spot, they played it safe and made no decision until there was no other choice. Unfortunately for Stalin, by the time the doctors showed up, terrified and shaking at the thought of treating Stalin, all they could do was order extra rest. And leeches, of course. Nothing like medieval medicine in the mid-20th century to fix up one of the most powerful men in the world. Stalin was paralyzed in half of his body. He had extremely elevated blood pressure and was unresponsive when the doctors arrived. When they were done with initial treatment, the only difference were the leeches on his face. His daughter and surviving son were called in to see him. His son was subsequently ejected for being drunk and belligerent to the doctors, which can only be viewed as like father, like son. Stalin's health continued to deteriorate, and on March 5th, four days after his discovery on the floor of his room, Joseph Stalin passed away. His daughter Svetlana said it was a difficult and terrible death. The cause for his initial collapse and eventual death was determined to be a cerebral hemorrhage. Following his death, the leaders of the USSR formed a system of collective leadership, including Nikita Khrushchev. It took about a year for Khrushchev to consolidate power, becoming the de facto premier of the USSR. Khrushchev spent his first years in power trying to de-Stalinize the Soviet Union. He spoke out against the gulags, against the secret police arresting anyone who disagreed with Stalin, against Stalin's political ideas and reforms, and against Stalin as a leader. Khrushchev would go on to have Stalingrad renamed and enact changes to counter much of what Stalin strove for while in power. While later Soviet leaders tried to renew popular opinion of Stalin as a national hero, it never quite stuck, and there are very mixed feelings on Stalin in the countries he ruled while in power. Strictly speaking, the last 24 hours of Joseph Stalin were a miserable, unconscious blur. No big actions were taken to alleviate or hasten his suffering, or to prepare for his death. But looking back, we can see how his behavior, the cult of personality he built around him, and his treatment of his inferiors were all pivotal in how his end played out. Mistrust and fear turned and bit the hand that fed them, leading to one of the most powerful men in the world for decades dying, with little to nothing done to save him. Never thought there would be any commonality between George Washington and Joseph Stalin, but medieval malpractice rings that bell. If you liked this installment of the new series, stay tuned for more by subscribing. Feel free to look through our 50 plus videos and see if anything else sparks your interest. Thanks again for listening, and we will leave you with a contemporary quote from US President Franklin D. Roosevelt. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself.